We are now well into the beautiful Scottish Highlands. In the last episode, we reached all the way to Oban. After a windy sail through the Sound of Mo. In this episode, Chapter 6, we are ready to take on the great fjords leading to Fort Williams. This is where the entrance to the impressive Caledonian Canal starts, which will take us straight through Scotland with the help of a huge network of man-made locks and canals, before we enter back into the salty oceans at Inverness on Scotland's east side. Very strong currents into the port of Inverness. So let's check out the marvel of the Caledonian Canal. So good morning from uh, Oban. What a beautiful place to, to wake up to. Look at this. And uh, I'm making myself ready now to go to, uh, to uh, Fort Williams. It's about 30 nautical miles this way. And uh, the weather is beautiful and everything looks pretty, pretty good. But I want to go over to uh, the city of Oban. I was here 17 years ago in this marina, but I never got over to Oban. So now I'm gonna pop over with Tessie and uh, have a look. So let's go. Slowly we cross the sound until reaching the open marina facilities on the other side. A welcoming and helpful hand made sure we arrived safely at the pontoon. I needed some groceries for the ride and took a stroll around the busy streets of Oban. It's a very popular target for tourists coming from all over Scotland, Great Britain and Europe. With beautiful surroundings looking over to the island of Carrera and just enjoying the scenery and people of the city of Oban. While enjoying a cup of coffee in one of the many local pubs, restaurants and coffee shops I eventually found the huge Tesco grocery store before heading off for the next chapter. Let's do some grocery shopping for Fort William. I was relieved to see that Tesco had the essentials and then some to survive the next days through all the upcoming locks and canals. Okay, I will take off the hydrogen rudder because it uh, constrains the maneuverability and I'm going into the locks of uh, Caledonian Channel and I'm gonna need all the maneuverability that I can. It's gonna need some cleaning. After cleaning the hydrogen rudder, I popped it into place in its nest. We were ready for takeoff. On my way out, I passed several sailboats coming in. They were probably the same ones from the regatta up in Tobermory some days ago. It's so nice to see Scotland's great passion for sailing up close, alive and breathing. Let's go! In calm weather, we left the beautiful city of Oban, overlooking the Hutchison Monument, raised in memory of entrepreneurial shipowner David Hutchison who paved the way for the huge connection network of ferries between the Hebrides, which is today known as the Caledonian McBride. Now, let's drift into the huge fjord of Loch Linne. Well into the fjords now. And I must say it's really relieving to have a flat, calm water around me. No waves, I can just relax. No sails to attend to. No nothing, just just resting. So now we are uh, about to enter the first sound, tight sound. There's a lot of currents here, but I think 
We are getting there at uh, Slackwater now and we are surrounded by beautiful nature. Green hills and mountains wherever you look. So I'm in the right spot now. And this is gonna be it's gonna be like this for the next days now through the Caledonian Channel and just flat water and uh, beautiful a beautiful life. We motored hour after hour along the huge Loch Linne To view this scenery from my boat made me pinch myself to be sure I was here. So nice with a leveled out boat. No healing. Ah. The time was spent eating and drinking and just enjoying this beautiful stressless day. As we went along, the shape of the beautiful landscape started changing its shape. Alright, so we are closing into the second and last sound and uh, the currents are going to come with us now, a couple of knots. So this is the narrowest sound on the, on the trip uh, and the next is Fort Williams on the inside. So let's see how this goes. Every sixth hour, the ocean currents change its direction back and forth due to the moon's gravity towards our Earth. The huge lock inside the Coron Narrows is about to be filled up with seawater again and all the water have to pass through the narrow sound. This creates strong currents. It's just to enjoy the little ride. Wow, that was cool. Almost 10 knots through the sound while flying the drone. And now, it's great to Fort Williams. It's a long fjord. Wow, it's so incredibly huge and green and beautiful. And I'm very thankful to experience this. And I really hope you enjoy the ride together with me and that you get a sense of being here on board Tessie while we're doing this. We motored for hours more along the green-covered, everlasting Loch Linne until we finally reached the end of it. Okay, so now we enter Fort Williams, just over here. Beautiful little city. And uh, we have along here now, and we're going to the left. And that's the Caledonian, the start of the Caledonian Channel. Now we were starting taking on the real Scottish Highlands. The real inshore adventure starts here. Over the mountains, across the treetops. At Corpac Marina. This is where the first set of locks is located. So that's it. We're here. The start of the Caledonian Channel. Wow, it's packed with boats here. So we just have to find a spot and take it from there. Alright. Currents. Yeah, it is. It's really way more than you think. Yeah. We've got quite trouble coming in as well. It's like it's coming. Caledonian Channel. 
I bought a ticket for seven days, Saturday to Saturday, starting tomorrow. And uh, I think it's opening times, opening hours for the Lux. We have to uh, be within within that time. So I'll head over to the office and, and have a look. Let's sneak out from here. Just throw them more than... Thank you so much, guys. Okay, yeah, nice journey. Have a nice day with yourself. Thank you. So that's the first luck of the Caledonian Channel. Yes, this is the first of eight locks of what is called the Neptune's Staircase, marking the start of the Caledonian Canal. Being the longest staircase lock in Scotland, it will raise us up 19 meters to enter the canal. So we're going in the first canal now called Corpac Sea Lock. This is the first one. And uh, there are many more to go and uh, I am alone so I'm a little bit worried about the lines here. But I think it's going to be fine. And uh, good morning by the way. I hope you enjoy this video through the Caledonian channel. Let's go. The man-made canal was constructed by the Scottish engineer Thomas Telford in early 1900 and is connected between four lakes or locks, Loch Lucky, Loch Oik and the famous Loch Ness, where the sea monster Nessie is said to be observed several times according to the tales told. I was already prepared trying to find the monster when I reached the huge Loch Ness and at last the little Loch Dockfor. This 100 km long line of lakes and valleys is also known as the Great Glen, created through a series of tectonic activities almost 400 million years ago. 50 nautical miles and 90 locks all together from end to end, before entering back into the sea on the east side of Scotland. Now let's check out this marvel. The lock gets filled with water from the above locks until water level reaches the next lock. The big steel gates open up for you to proceed to the next one. This goes on for how many locks is to be passed to reach the level of the canal. Then the journey can start. It's an extraordinary experience sailing deep into the landscape of Scotland along the many miles of man-made canals, surrounded by mountains and green-covered hills. This was something else than the big ferocious oceans I was so used to. Beautiful day, no rain, finally. And we're on our way to the first lux now. It's going to be a swinging bridge that we are closing into now in, uh, in half an hour. So I'm just enjoying the incredible view of sailing in the woods. It's a huge leap from the offshore uh, life, the huge waves and stormy seas to here, sailing in the canal between trees and in fresh water. Wow. We eventually enter the first big lake of Loch Lucky. With its eight nautical miles of length, it was plenty of time to enjoy the Scottish Highlands up close from the comfort of the cockpit of Tessie. Which was now just a tiny little dot compared to the massive surrounding landscape. So that's the end of the lake. And that was really beautiful. Now we're going in the canals again, one more lock and uh, into the canal. What is really cool with sailing these canals is uh, the, the camera view on the mast up. Look at that. It's amazing. We really get to see the surroundings around here. So it's an expansion of the surroundings and another cool thing with the camera when I sit there and stare I can't really 
see over the bow because of the dinghy lying on deck. And then I can just watch the camera and I see exactly what's going on in front of me. Thank you, Ray Marine, making life so easy. The canal life is as peaceful as it gets on days like these. You take a break whenever you want. You don't have to look too much on the weather forecast. Or plan your route according to the weather. It's plain and simple. Lux closes at 5 every day and opens at 8 in the morning. If you miss it, you'll just have to wait until next morning and proceed your journey slowly through the vast landscape. So, we have now just finished Lok Oik and we're getting close to the bridges and canals into Fort Augustus which will lead us into, uh, into uh, Brokness and let's see if we can notice the monster in Brokness getting close So cool They're opening the bridge just for Tessie Now we had reached the first lock starting to take us down towards sea level again. I must say I was starting to get used to this beautiful simple lifestyle. Okay, so on our way downwards then. Next is Fort William, Lux of Fort William, hopefully for the close at five o'clock. I'm amazed how quiet and peaceful it is in these locks and all these beautiful buildings along the way. I feel a little bit blessed to be here. That's the gate closing. I just reached the final lock let him into Fort Augustus. This is a beautiful little village built around these stairways of another four locks letting you further down towards sea level. Fort Augustus has everything you need of shops and restaurants to refill your supplies as you go along the canals. I spent another night here and took a relaxing stroll to explore this little village. Next morning the locks opened up and we could start the descent. I also managed to put on a show for the crowds, losing my bowline in the middle of the operation. This made Tessie drift until she blocked the lock, stopping the whole operation for a while. Here you go, I got it all. <laughs> Slightly embarrassed by the scene I had created, I tried my best acting like nothing had happened, but I was very glad for all the good help getting Tessie tied back up again. I started my engine and slided out the last lock of Fort Augustus. We had now reached the last big lake to be crossed before entering seawater. It's not just another lake. It's one of the most famous and spellbound lakes in the world. 
due to its old mysterious history of the Loch Ness Monster. I'm sure it must be hiding somewhere in these waters. I was happy to be sailing and enjoy the silence. Although in these locks winds are on and off all the time. Meantime, I had to deal with a tough situation. Now we have a little crisis on our hand. It is the last coffee capsule for the machine. And it's going now. So we're out of coffee. I could only enjoy the last holy drops for so long. We were getting deep into the locations of the sea monster Nessie. It was time to see if we could find any sign of life underneath us. Alright, I've stopped the boat now because, as you know, Lork Ness is famous for its Nessie Loch Ness monster and I'm gonna try to find it and how in the world am I gonna try to find it? I have an underwater drone and it goes down to 100 meters and we're gonna see how this is now it's pretty wind quiet and I'm gonna check if the boat is drifting if the wind catches us and we drift we cannot launch the drone we need to lie pretty completely still so let's see what we get out of it is tight so it's, it's not easy it's not easy but even though no Nessie so far it's a pity because I know she's down there somewhere I know it yes it was a pity indeed Tessie was drifting with the wind tidying up the signal cable attached to the drone that way it was near impossible to get to any depth, as the drone just got dragged along. I had to accept the defeat. Ah, at least we tried. So let's go towards the beautiful ruins of Urkehort Castle now, just over here. This is the Urquhart Castle, once one of the largest in Scotland. It acted as a medieval fortress for over 500 years and have seen great violent conflicts during its lifespan. Control of the castle passed back and forth between the Scots and English during the Wars of Independence. The power struggles continued as the Lords of the Isles regularly raided the castle up until the 1500s. Urquhart Castle was later blown up during the Jacobite Risings, leaving these iconic remains of glimpses into medieval times and the life of its noble residents. Caledonian Canal was coming to an end. I enjoyed the last beautiful scenery as I got closer and closer to the ocean. Okay, so that's the end of Loch Ness. And we are going straight into the woods again. 
and uh, there's the last canal in there and that's leading to Inverness and I hope to get out the last logs into the ocean to, to reach Inverness to, today but it's time time dependent the logs close at uh, 5 and now it's 2 30 so it might go but if not we're gonna have a pretty calm evening in front of us speed now to reach uh, the next lock there for closing time so we got told to, to speed up so there we go that's our bridge open so we made it yeah okay no we didn't goes up again. Next lock up there. That's us passing the last bridge, swing bridge in the Caledonian Canal. Amazing. We're warming up in the marina here and waiting for the next last locks tomorrow morning. And that's gonna be it. And that's us more up on the seaport marina. So tomorrow we are heading out in salt water again. Saint Kilda! Good morning, last day and we are aiming for the last set of locks to get out to the sea again. So it's nothing more to say than just let it happen and we're going to settle down in Inverness Marina and go from there. Luck, and this is funny because now we're in fresh water, and that's the ocean out there. So, just one more luck in front there, and that's it.
very strong currents into the port of Inverness. Better keep my tongue straight. That's the Caledonian Canal and uh, what can I say, I hope you really enjoyed this video, going to the canals and now it's back to business. I have to um, put Tessie in uh, offshore mode again, mount the, the stay sail, the hydro vane, take down the rubber dinghy and all that. So, But that will be in the next episode, sailing from uh, Inverness back to, uh, to Norway, to Haugesund. And it's going to be a blast again. So stay tuned. See you soon. So hang on and enjoy the last chapter 7. So this is going to be the night, I think. Sailing from Inverness to fantastic Fraserburg. Where sailors rarely go. Here I visited the Museum of Scottish Lighthouses. Before plunging back into the big North Sea. Crossing over back to Norway. Follow me on Facebook and Instagram for news and updates. Thank you so much for all of your support on Patreon and PayPal. And it's amazing to see all the people around the world wearing my NBJS merchandise. Links to everything in the video description. If you'd like a NBJS Burgi for your boat, send me an email to post at nbjs.no. See you in Chapter 7. Eric. <laughs>